Hello and welcome to Monday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where today we're going to see another example of what I consider to be the hardest trick to pull off in Sudoku, and that is to make an easier puzzle still with a lot of beauty and interest to the solve. And that is something that Skojo has become an absolute master of. We did a puzzle, was it about a week and a half ago on the channel called Cascade? which was a beautiful thermo Sudoku, but also approachable. Um, but when you solved it, it was sort of like, ah, oh, that, ah, oh, that, it was, it, was, it was great. Now this one, Electric Explosion, uh, repeats the trick apparently. It has one star for difficulty on Logic Masters Germany. Although I did note in the comments, there were some people saying it should have two stars, but it, it was either, it's either one or two stars. And it's just German Whispers rules today. Nothing more complicated than that. I get eight given digits, which is a, a generosity not often afforded to me these days. Um, and I'll read you the rules of this in a moment or two's time. A um, couple of things to mention first. Did any of you solve yesterday's Sunday Times crossword by Dean Mayer? If you did, how amazing was that puzzle? That was one of the best cryptic crosswords I have seen in my life. In fact, I was I was thinking, um, I, I'm thinking of making a bonus video over on Patreon, um, which I could, I'd have to wait till Friday to release because it's a, a prize puzzle and we don't want to spoil um, the sort of integrity of the Times' competition. Um, but I just want to talk to people about the puzzle. Um, so I, I snip one of the clues. I can't, I won't, I won't tell you the answer, but if any of you are aficionados of cryptic crosswords and you haven't seen the, this puzzle, have a look at this clue. One, one in happiness born free. Um, try and solve it. And when you solve it, just go, oh my goodness, that is so, so clever. Um, anyway, so uh, if any of you might be interested in, uh, in me making such a video. So I've got somebody to talk to about these things. I would appreciate letting me know. Drop drop me a comment on this video and tell me. Um, other than that, a couple of birthdays to do, haven't I? Where are the birthdays? Um, Xiao, Xiao, you've turned 28 today. Many happy returns, my friend. I know this because your partner Susan wrote to us um, and she's, I know she's traveling, isn't she? So she can't be with you today. She's sorry about that. And she hopes the shout out makes up for it a little bit, uh, as do I. Um, and Zhao, I hope you have a great birthday with, of course, a large slice of chocolate cake. Um, and also a very happy birthday to a long time uh, supporter of the channel, Marusha Dark. Marusha, uh, who's given me one of my favorite mugs a Let's Get Kraken mug, um, which I still use to this day whenever I need a large cup of tea because it's it's a big mug. Um, but Marusha bought that mug for me uh, a couple of years ago. Still going strong and one of my favourites. So Marusha, thank you for that and many happy returns today. I hope you have a brilliant birthday with cake, of course. And with all that said and done, and with Pi just going past on the clock, we went past three minutes, 14 seconds there as I look down. Let us have a look at the rules um, to electric explosion and see what Skojo has in store for us. Uh, the rules are very short. Normal Sudoku rules apply. So the digits one to nine need to appear in every row, in every column, and in every three by three box, just once each, obviously. And adjacent digits along a green line must have a difference of at least five. So if that cell was a three, this square here would have to either be eight or nine because it needs to be at least five different from three. Um, and obviously if we can't, if we go downwards, we get into negative numbers before we get anything that was gonna work. And to my knowledge, this puzzle does not involve negative numbers. Do have a go though. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. But now I get to play, let's get cracking. Uh, I suspect we're going to have to talk about the secrets that I know about German whispers lines. Um, yeah, okay, I can immediately see that my secrets are going to yield mucho digits here. Really, really a lot of digits. Okay, so let's start off with the most basic secret of German whispers lines, and that is what happens if you put a five on a German whispers line? And the answer is nothing good because this digit now becomes very, very hard to fill because we need something that's at least five different from five. And if we go up, we get to double digit numbers, which are not Sudoku numbers. And if we go down, we get to zero or negative numbers, also not Sudoku numbers. So you simply cannot put a five on a German whispers line. 
And that means that every cell or every digit that does appear on a German whispers line can be thought of as having one of two uh, qualities. It's either going to be below five or it's going to be above five. It must be one of those two things once it cannot be five. But the interesting thing is that say this digit was below five, well, can this digit also be below five now? And the answer is, of course, no, because no matter how how stretched apart we make these digits, that which would be a one and a four, one and four are not at least five apart. So in fact, what you have to do is oscillate like this. Obviously, we don't know whether this, this one here is, is low or high, but we have to oscillate as we move along the German whispers lines. Um, so sort of the polarity switches as you move from cell to cell. And the only other thing I'll mention is that digits like four and six are very hard to put on German whispers lines because they're monogamous digits. They only have one partner uh, and they are very, very wedded to that partner. So if you put six here, both of these cells would have to be a one because six does, has no other partner other than one. If this was a four, these would both be nine. And obviously that actually isn't going to work. So I wouldn't suggest we're going to put four or six in this cell. Do uh, No, I don't have to say do have a go. <laughs> I've already said that. I was just I was just sharing my secrets. Um, but what, what my secrets mean, look, is that I can pre place five immediately in row three because I can't put five on the whispers line. And that's going to mean I can pl place five down here. And actually down here. It's probably going to be the case that we're going to get loads of fives, if not all of them. Maybe not all of them, but several of them. Well, actually, no, we are going to get all of them because that one, fives in column two, look, get there, which means I can place five here, which means there's now four fives pointing at the middle box. And whenever you have four of one digit pointing at a box in Sudoku, you can always place that digit as a result. So we get given all the fives for free. Um, now, what next? Do we have to shade the lines, I wonder? How does the shading work? If th that digit, let's, um, thing is with the shading, we don't know at the moment, obviously, which way round it's going to go. So I'm not going to use um, orange and blue for my colours. Orange is normally my high colour and blue is my cold colour, low colour. Um, so I, th these two have to be the same and then that one and then that one so they are all the same color let's make those purple so the other colors are the other version so let's make those gray so right okay now there's a lot of symmetry to the 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 pattern in this grid all that's breaking the symmetry actually is the givens but we can now think about this row and ask whether this square could be purple and the answer is no because if this square is purple by symmetry all of those would be purple because as we oscillate along the line every other digit would have to be purple so imagine imagine purples were one two three and four well then these there would be six cells in row seven that have to be selected from ones, twos, threes, and fours. And that is going to necessitate repeated digits. So, so these have to not be purple. They have to be gray. Uh, now that means that one is also gray. Look, so these ones become purple. But the interesting thing is because this puzzle is rotationally symmetrical around 90 degrees in not in terms of the givens, but in terms of the electric explosion, we can now immediately gray all of those squares. We can immediately purple these squares again because we can't have too many purples in column seven. And now we can't have too many purples in row three. So we immediately get more grays there. We get more purples here. And therefore, all we need to do now is find one cell in this grid on gray or purple that is that could be forced to be high or low. And we're going to get a lot of pencil marking done very quickly. Uh, no, I wondered about those. If they are low, they have to be twos and threes because they see one and they see four. Uh, 
Hang on. I can't, I can't see it yet. I'm sure there's going to be... Well, I'm fairly sure there's going to be something. Um, or not, as the case may be. Six in box eight, I can approximately place. Ah, I can get a six in that box. Look, so where is six in this box? And the answer is not there. But the answer is also not in these those cells. Oh, that's a horrible, horrible choice of highlighting colour. Not in those yellow ones either. Because all of these um, have 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 partner cells that see each other. What do I mean by that? Well, if we put six in there, these two squares are the next cells on the line. And both of those would be ones in the same column if we put six there. You can see it's the same problem. Both of these would be ones. And by symmetry, <laughs> these two are going to have exactly the same profile. So in fact, six... Um, Oh, I didn't. Hang on. I didn't realise I was just going to get the six. Am I talking absolute nonsense? No, I'm not. I, I, sorry, I, I, I thought I was going to get to put a pencil mark six in, but I actually just get the six. Isn't that what? My brain is so weird. Because I saw that I could, pay, could put a six here, but I didn't see I could put a six there. That is so strange. So I, I saw the effects of having a six in column five on this box without realizing I'd actually got a six I could place in box eight. God, goodness me. Right, oh, where's six in this box then? Can't go there by, oh, well, okay. Six can't go there for a different reason. If that's a six, it puts a one there, which is going to repeat the one in um, row four. So in fact, six has only got one position which is all my, oh no, okay, we, well, I think we're going to get loads of sixes as well, because six can't go here in box nine, so six goes there, which places a one in the corner by the monogamous nature of six. Now where does six go in box three? It can't go here again, this would cause double one, so it's got to go here. It can't go in either of those squares, so it goes there. So we're nearly going to get them all, are we? No, we are going to get them all. So all the sixes go... Ah, what on earth is going on there? All the sixes go into the grid. Okay, let's try fours. So we've got a four here. Uh, hmm. I wonder, actually. Yeah, yes. In fact, I am going to do fours, but I'm not going to use this digit, at least not immediately, to do it. Because the thing, the thing I was noticing when we thought about sixes in these squares, all of that logic also applies to fours, of course. If you put a four in any of these squares, you break the puzzle because of where nines would go in these columns. So there must be a four down here in box uh, eight. But look, about what about this box? There must be a four in one of those squares. So actually we get a four in, in box eight. We get a pencil mark in box five. Now, can we repeat that trick? Oh, yeah, we can a bit. Four here has to be there, so that's a four. Okay, that might be as far as our trickery might take us. Ha have we got any given nines? I don't think so. What about four... Mm, I'm not sure. Four over here, is that somehow restricted? Can't go there, can't go there. But four could be here, couldn't it? So I think four has three possibilities in box seven. Oh, sorry, no, it's better. Where's four in box nine? It can't go in the two wing cells because of Sudoku, and it can't go in these two squares because it would cause repeated nines. So that's a four which means that is not a four, which, yeah, where's four in column eight? It can't go here now. So that's a four. Four can only go with nine. So we get a nine in the grid. That's not four by Sudoku. This nine is, well, that's going to stop fours appearing in some positions. Uh, well, like that one, but we could have got that. That's not a four using the power of four rather than nine. Um, Uh, 
So four actually has got a lot of cells it can be in in box one. I think there are at least four positions. Sorry, I just had to step away for a few minutes. Um, tears and tantrums. Um, not from me, I hasten to add. Sorry, I'm not actually sure this interruption is entirely entirely over. <laughs> um, yeah, I think let's risk it. Um, yeah, sorry, yes, I just uh, I got distracted. Um, but we were doing quite well, weren't we? What were we doing? I put. Oh, I was going to say I put. A, I got fours into the grid. Uh, yeah, we were looking at we were looking for the monogamous digits. That's what we were doing, and we'd found lots of them. Oh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know whether I'm going to get interrupted again. I'm sorry. Um, it's not, um, okay, don't get distracted. Fours. Okay, so where can four go? We pencil marked it up here, and we had. Um, hmm, I don't. Yeah, we got the nine, didn't we? I don't know. I don't know. Let's try. Uh, let's try something else. What could we do other than that? We have to get. Well, let's try. Let's try threes and sevens then. If fours and sixes haven't yielded enough fruit, we've got one given seven, no given threes. So seven, seven. If it appears on a line can only go next to one and two. So that is very interesting. That is very, very interesting in that column. So there we go. There's straightforward deduction. Um, where is seven in column eight? And the answer is in very, in no places, absolutely no places that are on lines. Because if you put seven there, this has to be a one, two pair and that breaks. It obviously can't go there by Sudoku. If you put seven there, that has to be a one, two pair and that breaks because there's a two already in the box. And if you put seven there, that square could be neither one nor two through a mechanism rarely used in, in my videos known as Sudoku. So, so there is no seven at all uh, in this column other than there. And that is going to be perfect because now all of a sudden by Sudoku, we've got gray. Uh, because there's a seven in grey up here. And once once we know that there is a high digit in grey, we know all the high digits have to appear in the grey cells. And therefore all of the low digits have to appear in the purple cells. And therefore, look, we can, yeah, look, well, look, that's just actually a six, seven pair. So that's an eight, nine pair straight away. That digit, oh, this is, this is going to finish the puzzle, I think. I actually think this might finish the puzzle. That's got to be a seven in its row. Um, that's a two, four pair. Oops, wow, I didn't mean to do that. I wanted to eliminate two and four from these. So these have become a one, three pair. That can't be four. Four is uh, monogamous. That would cause double nine. So it's got to be two. This row hasn't got a fourth low digit in it. So that's got to be here and it's got to be four. So this digit is also one or three. These digits are sevens and eights. That means this digit is nine. This digit is eight. That means this digit, ah, oh, what's going on here? So this digit is low. Oh, no, 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 we can, we can keep going. We just keep filling in digits. Um, these are not sixes. I should have probably taken more care, actually. Um, this is low, and it's four, therefore, by, by, that's by column logic, counting the high digits in the column. Um, so this is, this is a high digit, and is it an eight or a nine? This can't be six or seven. It can't be, it can't be six for a very obvious reason. There is a six next to it. It can't be seven because it's, it's got two and three next to it on the line, and three and seven are too close to one another. Um, they're only four apart. Six comes out of these squares, look. So this is an eight or a nine. It's not seven by Sudoku. Now these squares are a one, three pair. 
and that gives us a 1 3 pair in this column we can take 6 out of these squares so that becomes an 8 or a 9 as well by Sudoku I've got an 8 9 pair so I've, got, I've not put 2 into box 5 um, these squares are a 1 3 pair which means this is a 7 8 or 8 or a 9 it's not 7 these squares are also a 2 3 pair which means this square is a 1, that square is a 3. 3 can only go next to 8s and 9s on its line, oh, which we could have got from Sudoku, but why do it that way when we could have done it, when we did do it, in fact, or I did do it, using the, the German whispers nature of the world. That's not 7. There's an 8, 9 pair in this row. Ah, yeah, there you go. That cell can't be a high digit anymore. 6, 7, 8, 9, all seen. So it's a low digit which means that's a high digit Ooh. that's a low digit oh that's well that's surprising actually i thought that was going to immediately resolve a lot of things but it didn't seem to want to these can't include four because of this four um, maybe what i should have done actually is to yeah, shade in all of the low digits. It might be easier to spot and scan what's going on. I'm, I'm, that look, here we go. Seven can't be next to three on the line. So that's got to be two. That's got to be three. Oh, that, nah, that didn't do it. Um, this row needs, this square is one, three or four. And it's not one, so it's three or four. Four can't go here by Sudoku. Four can't go here by Sudoku. I've got a seven, eight, nine triple in this column. So that square on this whisper is two, three or four. It's not two. So it's a three or a four. Could be a three in the corner. I've got a three, four pair in the column. So this square becomes a two. Um, uh oh, more, more, there's more, more wailing, gnashing of teeth. Um, <laughs> better, better hurry up. Right, this square here is an 8 or a 9. That gives me an 8-9 pair. That makes this a 7. 7 can't go next to 3 again, so that's a 2-3. These have got to be an 8-9 pair. Um, now, uh, what does that mean? 7-8-9-6. This is a 1 or a 3. It's definitely not a 4. And... Okay. Uh, the, ah, hang on, two should come out of here, shouldn't it? There's a two in the row. So that's a one, three, four triple. So this is seven or eight, and there's a naked single. That's eight, that's eight, that's seven. So this is nine, this is eight, this is seven. So this is eight, this is nine. This might do it now. So that's nine. That's not nine in the corner, so that can't be four. That gives me a one three pair. It makes this four. That gives me a, that's three in the corner. Oh, that's three in the spotlight. What's going? What's going on here? I can't put four into this box anymore. I'm. I'm. Ah, uh, maybe the four could be there. But if the four could be there, this seven's wrong. Oh dear. Well, I. I think I'm going to put that down to being distracted. Hang on. Let's go back. Something very odd has gone on. Why did I have four? I don't know. This doesn't look right, actually, does it? Eight, seven go in there. I've got, I can see there's a one, three pair sitting in there. Why isn't that a four? That looks dodgy, doesn't it? Let's go back. So what did I do? I put one and three into that square. Well, that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to claim distraction. That square, I think, absolutely could still be four. It can't be two. So that's one, three or four. Now, this is still a one, three, four triple. This is still a seven or an eight. It's still an eight there. That's eight. That's seven. That can't be next to three so that is one 
this is 9, this is 9, this is 8, this is 9. Has that done it? That 9 there is important because it does take 4 out of this square, which means this has to be the 4, which still gives me a 3 in the corner. That's 3 in the corner. That's 3 in the spotlight, losing its region. Now this can be a 4, look. That seems to have to be a 2. That's a 9. That's an 8 by Sudoku. That's a 7 by Sudoku. And there must be some way we've got of... Res oh, yeah, the 8 goes here. Look, the 7 goes here. That can't go next to 3, which resolves the 1s and the 3s. That's a 9. That's a 7. That's a 9. That's an 8. That's a 1. That's a 3. That's a something. Uh, the technical term for something being a 3. That's an 8. That's a 9. That's a 3. So that's an 8. And that might be correct. Yes. A thousand, what? A thousand people have solved that already. Good grief. Skojo, you are a master. That Well, I mean, it's a brilliant puzzle, actually. It's a brilliant ex you know, sort of study in what you can do with German whispers lines. And, you know, it, and it's and it was easy to get wrong as I showed. <laughs> Although I am claiming a bit, I I got a bit distracted uh, during the solve today for reasons I hope you can understand. Um, loved it though. What a beautiful puzzle. Really, really quality. And I loved the way that you could sort of shade the lines all around the grid. And the big game in town was to get the highs or the lows sorted out. Let me know in the comments how you got on. I enjoy the comments, especially when, they, when they're kind. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.